Hi everyone. Good morning. Um, today we are delayed to have uh, Dr. Ao Yang to present um, his work. And uh, Dr. Tao Yang actually is our alumni. Um, got, got a PhD in uh, 2018 in our department, MSc. Um, as then uh, after that, he he continued his uh, post study also in uh, CTU. And um, his uh, expertise is high entropy alloy. And uh, the you know, uh, structure preparation and, uh, and application. And uh, um, uh, we, we, we are quite uh, surprised uh, his uh, capability on uh, discovering new stuff. So, yeah, that, that's welcome in. Please join me to welcome him. Thank you. Okay, please. Some problems. Everything's <laughs> quite different. Yeah, you use your hand. Yeah, you're quite a one of them. Yeah, sorry. So we decide to pass to the next adventure. Yeah, that's fine. So you Just to screw them? Actually, what he do is this one. So if you stand on that side, we can see your face. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, I, I use this one now. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, good morning, professors, and uh, also the students in front of the computer. And uh, thanks very much for coming to my seminar, uh, especially in such a tough situation caused by the COVID-19. And today, seminar, I would like to give a brief introduction to introduce my recent studies in the field of the high entropy alloy. High entropy alloy is actually a very new and hot topic in the material science and the engineering. And most of the studies in this, uh, this topic are mainly focused on the solid solution system. And uh, the difference for my research is that I was mainly focused on the intermetallic alloys in the intermetallic system. And also the high entropy alloy is called, called as uh, multi-component alloy and uh, the com com complex alloy and also the chemically concentrated alloy. But these are the different names and the uh, high entropy alloy is the well accepted name for the, this kind of newly emerging material. So in this today, so it's fine. <laughs> Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Have the mouse. <laughs> so my research is mainly based on the multi-component intermetallic system, and the topic of the talk is based on the. Okay. Fine. Uh, yeah, just keep that. Just keep that. Okay. Uh, the topic of the talk is about innovative design and also the advanced uh, structural materials application based on the multi component in the metallic alloys. And my research is mainly focused on the development of the advanced structural material based on the multi component in the metallic system. And there are two parts of my research activities. The first part is uh, nanoparticle strengthened alloys. And uh, the second part is uh, bulk intermetallic alloys. And uh, there's, and actually, we developed a lot of, oh, sorry, it's yours. Is, we we developed a lot of high performance material based on this uh, very complex system. And to carefully investigate the mechanical properties 
and the microstructure controls and also the uh, and also the deformation uh, behavior at various temperatures like from the cryogenic temperature to the room temperature and also the high temperatures and uh, the most important part is about the thermal stability we want to advance the structure application and the high temperatures is a big problem of the current the development of the many uh, advanced industry fields so we carefully investigated the fast transformation behavior at elevated temperature and also the grand growth behavior the causing of the second phase particles and also some other uh, aspect about the grand boundaries and uh, i was also very interested in some other types of material like the nanosteel the super LED, super alloys the 3d printing and also the catalyst application of intermetallic materials and uh, during the past uh, four to five years, I actually many folks on um, solving many big problems in the structural materials. And uh, we have many achieved many interesting discoveries and also the results. And by this way, we actually, until now, published over 25 papers in various high impact journals. For example, the two papers in Science Magazine and also the one papers in the Western Materials and also nature communication and some papers on the top journal of the Facebook methodology like the ACTA, Scripta and some other different journals. Uh, before I go to the my details about my research activities, so first I would like to give a brief introduction to introduce the research background, to introduce why people to investigate the structure material and why we have to investigate the uh, high entry value and uh, what motivated me to focus on the internet system. So the first question comes to some somebody that's why we people to put so many effort to investigate the uh, advanced structure material. A development of this high performance material for advanced structure application is actually very important for our daily life and also for various industry fields. And this kind of material can be used to increase the engineering reliability and also to reduce the pollution emission and uh, to help to reduce the structure weight for enhance the energy efficiency. But until now, there are still many critical issues in this field that uh, greatly inhibit the development of the structural material. For example, the strength ductility trade-off dilemma is a long-standing problem that exists in the structural material. Uh, it's a conflict between the strength and the, the ductility of the material. And uh, also the problem like the embrittlement at the cryogenic temperature, like the temperature at the liquid nitrogen temperature, uh, and also some problem like the intermediate temperature embrittlement for about uh, 3700 degrees C or 800 degrees C and uh, the problem like the high temperature softening. And also there are some other different kind of air problems in this field. And for the material science, actually, the key point is to how to make a big breakthrough, how to find out the solutions to overcome this problem and uh, what is the uh, reason underlying these this, uh, problems. We, we notice that the conventional analog design is actually based on the single principle element system, like the iron in the steel and the aluminum in the lunar basis alloys. So this approach has a approach that is limited for further enhancement and performance of the materials. And the high entry alloy, the multi component system, open a new alloy design strategy. Now, from this figure, we can see clearly that the conventional alloys stand in the first diagram, the, the corner of the first diagram. And for the high entry alloy, the conditions stand in the central region of the first diagram. It's a newly uh, developed uh, composition space. So from the combination point of view, we can see the high entry value shows a radical departure from that of the conventional material. And uh, basically for the high entry value, it shows, uh, contains multiple elements, typically three to five kinds of elements. 
with a concentration ranging between 5 to 35 atomic of each element. And by this way, we believe that high entropy light opens a huge new complete space that can be used to tailor the microstructure and also the properties of the metallic material. It actually means a new possibility of the material design. And also from this figure, we can see that a, a lot of the effort has been put into this field and the gradually increased the publication has been achieved, especially during the past uh, 10, five years. And for the field of the structure material, during the past five years, there are three papers published in science and also four papers in nature. And also there are many, many papers published in some other journals, top journals. Uh, the one thing that has to be noticed is that the early stage design of the high entry weapon is mainly based on the concept of the increased configurational entropy of the multi component system. One of the goals is to achieve the compositionally concentrated single phase solid solution. And uh, various physical models has been developed to screen the single phase solution. And uh, in the meantime, we people also to try to award the intermetallic phases in the high entropy light system, especially to pursue the uh, F, uh, FCC type high entropy light, the first and the cubic structure at high entropy light. And what is the unique properties of this kind of the solution, solid solution material? We can see that alloy multiple elements with different atomic sizes and also the crystal structures I expect it to produce the high lattice distortion and also the massive defect structures in this high entropy alloy, uh, which will change the properties of the materials greatly. And for the FCC type high entropy alloy, we can notice that they generally condense multiple, uh, princi multiple principal elements, no matter it's uh, uh, equiatomic or non equiatomic. It's very high, highly complex in the chemistry, and also this type of the high entropy alloy shows very unique structural properties. The first one is about the mechanical metal stability. It suggests that this kind of the material can generate the micro trains that we fought, and also the mitin site during the plastic deformation, and uh, also they have some other unique structural feature like the sluggish diffusion effect, and also the short range the ordering effect. One typical example is about the candle alloy. It's an equiatomic alloy solid solution with the FCC structure. We can see that for this kind of alloy, it shows uh, exceptional high light conductivity and also excellent damage tolerance in this region, even at the protein temperature of the liquid nitrogen, which is much better than those of the most conventional alloys. Such a silver properties uh, many ascribe to the micro trains, the stacking faults, and the deformation to its micro pans, which are dynamically formed during the plastic deformation, and uh, will produce the trip effect, namely the training induced plastic effect, and also the trip effect is the transformation induced plasticity effect. And by uh, using these two kind of the effect, we can increase the work hardening capability of the alloys and also to delay the onset of local necking is the undesigned the local stress concentration of the material will make the materials fracture earlier during the tensile deformation. The problem for this kind of the materials we can see from this slide that this type of the material, although have decent ductilities at the ambient and low temperatures, but they shows very low yield chances, especially at the elevated temperatures, which will gradually limit their practical applications. So people try to use a lot of different kind of strengthening method to imp increase the yield chances of this type of the material, and also in the meantime want to take, make full use of this large tensile ductility. So people try to use the salt solution to uh, strengthen this material, but badly, salt solution provides only very limited strengthening effect. And also people try to use the 
code working hardening and also the grain refinement to increase the yield stresses from these curves, we can see that these two kind of methods can effectively strengthen the alloys. But the big problem is that they cause a substantial ductility reduction and also the plastic instability, namely the early onset of the necking from this figure. We can see that we will neck quickly, even at a very limited tensile ductilities. And more recently, people try to use the precipitation of the nanoparticles to strengthen the material. And from these curves, we can see that the precipitation hardening can give the very high yield strengths of the material from 2 megapa 200 megapascal to GPAS megapascal, uh, pegpascal of those yield strengths. And also, the materials can maintain a good work hardening during uh, post yielding region. But the problem is that it will also cause a reduction of the ductility. But based on the physical methodology of the intermetallic and also the material design, we believe that this negative impact can be minimized, even completely eliminated by careful control of the precipitation, and especially by introducing the ductile multi-component nanoparticles. Because the duct a problem with the ductility loss is in these systems is mainly caused by the formation of the uh, brittle phases, especially the brittle phases at the grain boundaries. So if we can avoid the formation of these brittle phases and also to promote the pre precipitation of the nanoscale, ductile, and multi-component intermetallic nanoparticles, we are expecting to overcome this problem. So how to break through, uh, I will uh, give a, sh a short memory about this uh, summary of the development of high entropy alloy. The some key points should be noted. Uh, the first one is the for the high entropy alloys and also for the development of the structural material, the maximization of the entropy is not a necessary requirement to design the material with high performance. And also, the intermetallic phases are generally excluded during the early design of the high entropy alloy. It's mainly ascribed to their intrinsic embrittlement. But I think, personally, think that it's unreasonable. Actually, we noticed that some kind of intermetallic phases I found really to be intrinsic ductile rather than brittle. In particular, for those intermetallic phases with the order the FCC type, namely called as the L12 structure in the metallic phases. So, compared to the maximization of the entropy, we believe that the multiple alloying, especially the elaborate design of the multiple elements in the one system, is a key factor. We can use these elements to change the structures, both of the solid solution phases and also the intermetallic phases. And uh, the best way is to combine them together in one alloys, and uh, by this way we can to produce the enhanced mechanical property accordingly. This is the basic our uh, design concept. So we, uh, based on this thinking, we introduce the high density and also the ductile multi-component in the nanoparticles in one alloy system. From this figure, we can see that the matrix is the FCC structure is actually very ductile. And also for the second phase nanoparticle, it shows the order the FCC structure is the L12 structure. It is also very ductile phases, especially in the when, when they are precipitated out in a single uh, crystal form. And we use uh, proper the thermal mechanical processing can put together these two kinds of the nanostructure in one system and uh, keep their structure at the nanoscale. And uh, by this way, we design the ultra strong and also the dark time materials. Before I go to the detail of the processing of the material, I use the Thermocac, it's a very famous software based on the uh, company to conduct the thermodynamic calculation and also the kinetic calculation. We use this thermodynamic calculation to screen the alloy composition to predict the first relationship of the multi component alloy system. And by this way, we can predict the volume fraction and predict the alloy effects, such as aluminum, titanium, and also some different kinds of elements. 
to predict the, uh, their effect on the flash regions and also to predict the chemical condition, condition of each individual phases. And uh, also based on this phase relationship predicted by the Calfred calculation, we can customize the KGM conditions. Okay, let's have a look about the typical image about our newly developed the 77 alloy. Is a CMEM uh, image and the, this is the TM image, and also it's a higher than TM image. Uh, based on our design, we can see that the material shows uh, high density nanoparticles with the size of about the uh, uh, average about uh, 13 to 15 nanometer, and also shows a very high water fraction, it's about 50 percentage. And the un uh, uh, distribution is very uniform, and the nanoparticles uniformly distributed and embedded in the matrix. And the most important, the nanoparticle shows the coherent relationship with the surrounding the matrix and with a very small lattice misfit about uh, 0.2 percentage. And we also use the 3D uh, APT analysis to give a precise uh, uh, composition of the um, individual phases. And from this figure, uh, we can see that the most uh, pron pronounced figure is that both the matrix uh, and the precipitates are actually multi component. And also, uh, look at the nanoparticles, we can see that it shows the uh, A3B structure, is a typical auto FCC of A12 structure. And inside the uh, nanoparticles, the iron atoms and the cobalt atoms, from this figure, we can see that uh, this is the nanoparticle, shows the uh, cobalt atoms and also the iron atoms inside the L12 structure. By this way, the valence electron concentration of the nanoparticles will be reduced accordingly. We have to stabilize the L12 structure and avoid the formation of the either uh, detrimental brittle phases. And also we have to notice that another thing is the titanium. Titanium was also identified inside these nanoparticles. And the titanium occupation is the, 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 the site of the aluminum from action this site. The titanium mainly cause, uh, uh, occupied the, this site it will greatly increase the anti phase boundary energy of the nanoparticles, which will lead to the enhanced uh, uh, strengthening effect by um, increase the barrier for dislocation motion. So, uh, if we look at this structure, we know that the pronounced advantages of these dual phase uh, nanostructures, the, there are three as many, uh, there are major three aspects. The first one is the intrinsically ductile uh, structure. The FCC, both the uh, matrix and also the nanoparticles shows the FCC type structure. Although the matrix is the disordered FCC and uh, the uh, particles is the ordered FCC, but in general, these two kinds of FCC type structure, they are intrinsically ductile. And uh, the second one is the uh, coherent interfaces between the nanoparticles and also the uh, matrix it will help to reduce the stress uh, concentration and the, the fat boundary and it will help to uh, maintain or increase the uh, um, ductility of the material. And then the third one is the nanoscale, the size and the high density of the nanoparticles, which is the key point to cause the pronounced the increase of the yield strengths of this material. So by this design, we achieved a very superior, uh, a superior mechanical body of the newly developed material. Um, this shows the typical curves of the new design material. We designed this six, uh, uh, F6 alloy and 77 alloy. From this figure, we can see that compared to the uh, particle free, the best alloy is a solid solution FCC type alloy. By introducing this high density and dark type multi component the metallics, the newly divided the 77 alloy shows a superb combination of the both the high strengths and also the ductility and uh, with almost no local necking behavior in the 77 alloy with a very high uniform elongation 
from this curve, we can see that compared to the best alloy, uh, the 77 alloy shows a uh, high stresses, which is uh, almost the uh, five times higher than that of the best alloy, and also the ductility increase rather than decrease compared to the best alloy. So it's, this is a very unique uh, discovery. And we also make a, a direct combination with our uh, with uh, either high performance structure material. We can see that the, the successful achievement of both the high strength and the lack of activity of the 77 alloy apparently against the, the long standing strength ductility conflict that existed in the conventional structure material. We also use the TM analysis to identify the uh, interactions between the nanoparticles and also the matrix. And from this image, we can see that this regression basically cuts through these nanoparticles, and uh, this will cause uh, pronounced ordering strengthening. And the strength increment caused by the ordering strengthening can contribute to the majority of its total yield strengths, about the 75 percentage. And another, we uh, have a look uh, about the strength hunting behavior. Uh, it's also very unique and uh, different from the conventional alloys. We identify a multi-stage uh, work hunting uh, behaviors, which enables the excellent plastic stability of this material to plastically deform to a larger strain. The dynamic formation of the various dislocation structure Actually, we identified that to contribute to multi-stage strain hardening responses and to lead to the associated large tensile ductilities. And also, we have to notice that in this the density uh, in this particle strength in the alloys, we do not identify the trip effect and or the trip effect, the two very pronounced effect identified in a single phase high entropy alloy. But we observe the mi mi uh, microbands induce the plasticity. The microband induced plasticity will contribute uh, a very uh, important the toughening mechanism of the current material. It actually was identified as a low angle grain boundary and, uh, um, and the will play a very important role to. Um, uh, delay the online, uh, only early, set, early onset of the local necking and with a uh, very good uh, plastic stability of this uh, 77 alloy. The beneficial effect it can be described as uh, this three aspects. The first one is the formation of the microbands where this helps to release the stress concentration on the primary sleep plan like the one one plan is uh, uh, FCC type structure material due to the dislocation cross slip to either uh, crystalline plan. And the second one is this microbands can generate a large increase in back stress hardening, which is helpful to maintain the work hardening cap capability of the material and enables a continuous and steady plastic deformation even to a very large plastic strain. And the third one, the presence and uh, especially the dynamic formation of this microbands will cause the grain bond subdivision and also the grain refinement, which will further contribute to the strength enhancement because of the dynamic corpage effect. And the people also uh, conduct a lot of studies on their cryogenic temperatures. And it's demonstrated this, this type of nanoparticle strength in high entropy alloy shows a very excellent uh, superable uh, mechanical property at the li uh, liquid nitrogen temperatures that with the high yield strengths, large tensile ductility, and with almost no uh, embrittlement effect. So I don't talk uh, too much about this. It's actually uh, in some manner similar to that uh, room temperature behavior. And the next part, I will go to a very, very serious problem for the high temperature application and to introduce how that we use the innovative design to overcome this problem of intermediate temperature embrittlement. 
from this slides, we can see that the uh, high entropy law, and uh, especially the nanoparticle strength and high entropy law, shows a great potential for elevated temperature uh, in the engineering fields. The this type of high entropy law shows excellent sort of, um, thermal stabilities with uh, slow coarsening rate of the uh, uh, of the nanoparticles, which is much superior than that of the conventional nickel vessel silver alloy. So, inspired by this, we think that the development of the advanced uh, uh, nanoparticles uh, high entropy alloy will be very important to the development of the aerospace engine. Where the, this uh, this type of the engine actually is composed of many high temperature materials, and the development of the uh, high uh, high temperature properties of the material, we think that we gradually advance this uh, efficiency of the uh, aerospace engine. This is our motivation, but the problem is that serious extreme uh, embrittlement along, along the grain boundary. From this figure, we can see that this material shows a very, very brittle phenomenon and with a ducted minimum at the temperature range about 700 or 800 degrees C. And the brittlement is mainly caused by the grain boundary brittleness. And also, we have to notice that this brittlement actually is not a problem to the newly emerging high entropy alloy. It's also a very serious problem to the uh, current they used the super alloy, like the ink uh, 7, uh, uh, 18, and also some other types of the super alloy. So it's a very big issue, but I noticed that there are many, many uh, studies have been focused on to understand, understanding this, the embrittlement, the mechanism, but how to overcome and how to find out the solution, actually there is uh, no very effective method to be used. So during the past uh, almost one year, I've mainly focused on this type of the uh, brittle phenomenon and the problem. We propo proposed the double agent treatment because one of the problem of the ground boundary br brittle is caused by the um, undesigned precipitation of the brittle phases at the ground boundaries. This small no uh, amount of these uh, phases at the Boundaries might not cause a big problem at the plastic deformation at the room temperature or low temperature. But when this structure put into the high temperature application, it causes a big problem. So we use the double aging treatment that can be used to eliminate the undesigned the stellar air one 2 structure just shown here. And also we can use this double aging treatment to eliminate the first of us together and uh, to give a very clean grain boundary with uh, uniform and precipitation of the stable L12 phase. And by this phase, we can cause the uh, increase of the grain boundary to in and uh, also from this uh, fracture surface, we can see the fracture mode will be transferred from the dangerous intergranular fracture to the ductile transgranular fracture with the fine dimples but this method seems to be not uh, capable to be used uh, to change the uh, ductile frag uh, to to overcome the brittle embrittlement to be used at the 800 degrees C. When the double agent treatment treated the material, just as soon as this material, when we put this material to 800 degrees C, it also still has a very big problem and uh, with a very very brittlement effect. So this means that maybe just uh, by the control of the precipitation is not enough to overcome this problem. So we recently proposed uh, a new design based on introducing the heterogeneous column grain structure combined with uh, a double edging treatment. And uh, we can see this uh, conventional microstructure uh, produced by the equi um, grain structure and also it's a newly developed structure based on the heterogeneous column grain structure and inside of this uh, grains we can see also the duplex structures, a microstructure of the precipitation and by this design 
we can gradually increase the fracture resistance of this material even at the temperature of the uh, 800 degrees C. The tensile ductility increased from about uh, uh, two percentage to 20 percentage, and uh, uh, we achieved a very ductile fracture uh, mode. So uh, next, I will uh, give a brief introduction to the future development in the field of the uh, multi-component alloys and also the high chip alloy. And the first thing, I hope that I will focus on the quantitative control and also the well touch design of the grain boundaries in polycrystal material. We will focus on the interfacial segregation and also the associated phase transformation at the grain boundaries and also to uh, conduct some unique uh, uh, analysis and also the uh, DFT calculations to find a clear understanding about the uh, atomistic understanding of the grain boundary behavior. And the, the ultimate goal is to further to improve the properties of the material and solve the problem of the structure material. And also, the second part, I will focus on the development of the novel bulk multi-component multi intermetallic material. Actually, uh, as I talked about, the previous studies was manifest on the two-phase system. The two-phase uh, system is based on the nanoparticle strength in and nanoparticle embedded in the matrix. And uh, the next part, I want to develop the, the single-phase multi-component intermetallic materials and also focus on the strip application, especially for the high temperature application over uh, 1,000 degrees C. Uh, I think this is a very, very tough uh, phenomenon and a tough uh, problem that, that, that waiting eyes to, uh, to, to, to solve. And we also try to uh, produce the single crystal, the intermediate material. You know, many people argue that whether uh, the high entropy alloy can be uh, compared with the super. So, so if we look at the, this time of temperature region at the temperature over 100 degrees C, actually most uh, currently used uh, super alloy is produced by the single crystal. So at the present time, we cannot conclude that the high is, uh, uh, whether high alloy is better or, or, or not, because most uh, materials at the present stage is produced by polycrystal. So if we want to make a very, very clear and also the precise combination between the super alloy and also the, uh, the, the, the high entropy alloy, we have to, the first thing to pr produce this material in a single crystal and, and make a direct combination with them. And in the next part, uh, I want to improve and also the broaden the application of the intermediate material. And uh, we have some preliminary results to uh, investigate the functional application of the uh, intermetallic materials, like the catalyst material, and uh, some dynamic properties and uh, magnetic properties. This figure shows a uh, uh, recent publication on the catalyst, uh, 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 catalyst application of the intermetallic material that published the advanced uh, materials. Uh, so in the future, I hope that I can further uh, not only for the develop the new material based on the tank system and also to broaden the application of them to uh, not only the structural material to the functional material. Uh, okay, this is my talk, thanks. Um, thanks, Tao's presentation. Any question? Yeah, they can unmute. Yeah, they can turn on the microphone. You just have to invite the people who are watching to ask questions. Okay, also people from, from Zoom, any question? You can just open your mic if you have any question. Uh, if no one asks a question, I'd like to start the right. first one. Uh, <clears throat> uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the multi, the concept of the multi uh, element alloy, uh, I mean, only good 
for small pieces of materials. And uh, but you know, however, the you know, in order to for the practical use, uh, we need to make a, a material piece we teach. And this will involve the process, the heat treatment process, uniformly, right? In terms of the atomic scale, the element uniformly distributed, and also the defect you generate really uniform distribution. It is not really easy to do for multi component elements. Uh, in what, uh, if you got some gradient, you got mechanical treatment gradient. Yes. How, 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 what do you think about this? You know, how did you really uh, make multi component alloy into the critical use? Uh, uh, I strongly agree with you. Uh, so, for the current studies, we mainly focus on the, the microstructures control and based on the small ingot. But if yes. we put it to the large scale application, actually it's not uh, it, it's not uh, easy. But actually, it's very very difficult to make this uh, uniform structure of this material. Right. So uh, I noticed one case in the fabrication, the Kanda in uh, Taiwan, maybe the National Tsinghua University, they prepare this Kanda alloy to want to make uh, a large scale a large size. There are many many problems. Uh, the right. one of the big problem is uh, the walls during the solidification, and also uh, for the single phase alloys, if we want to uh, put it into the high temperature of generation and we quench it by the water, it, it will will be cracked. I know. So the, mm -hmm. this is a big problem. Yes. But my current research also is made based on the single impact. If I want to put this material into the large scale application, I think the most important thing that for, for, for me, I hope that I can collaborate with companies and to uh, develop the, the new uh, facilities and also the equipment and to make sure to these uh, structures can be well controlled. But at the laboratory, uh, at the plant time, I cannot make sure this point. So. Yeah, uh, may I also my second question to echo this uh, your, your answer. You know, the research field in the superconductor, when it was hot, mm -hmm. it published, you know, more than uh, 10,000 papers per month. That happens. But <clears throat> it cooled off. That because the idea of superconductor cannot make use of application. It, it, it cooled up. What do you think about the whole of this multi components? Uh, you know, although I still have a question on the, the high end of the area, but you know, how do you think about this if we cannot push for the practical use? The delight that we just speak. This is a very silly question, but mm -hmm. we'd like to hear your opinions. Um, uh, for myself and uh, at the plant time, I uh, based on the single samples or the single ingot to select the most uh, effective method to control the microstructure and uh, to produce uh, uh, the 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 uh, from my point of view is the most uh, uh, greatly in increase the, the properties. Uh, although this property is based on the small ingot, but the one important thing that we can control the uh, can figure out the relationship with the composition and also the microstructure, at, at least at the present time. This this thing is actually is determined. And the next stage is how to put this into the application uh, in a larger scale. We have the, some concerns from the industrial um, uh, viewpoint, but uh, uh, from I think it's uh, it's not easy, but it's not impossible. At least uh, in the future, I think it's not impossible. But I think we we uh, we at least at the plant uh, stage can figure out this uh, unique and uh, advantages of the material. So this will uh, motivate us to go through this direction. At least it means that the at the plant stage is not a uh, uh, the fourth direction. At least we have the motivation and also has uh, 
a good result to encourage us to go through this direction. And also, uh, yeah, I, I strongly agree with you. If we have to put this into the large-scale pre um, production also application, we have to put more effort into the industrial problems to prepare the like in big angle and also the, the uniform structure control and some other respect. But I think it's it's not impossible at least. Okay. Okay. I just want to ask a couple of sort of more thermodynamic kind of questions. Okay. So if you if you look at the if you look at sort of the main concept of the high entropy alloys, the the whole idea of going to high entropy by going to multi component, you know, you can get some idea of how big the entropy term is by you know, just looking at the expression you wrote down there. KT, C log C, subdue world mm -hmm. composition. If you form an inner metallic, there's also a heat of formation of the compound. Right? So you, you have this competition between the compound formation, which is based on enthalpic mm -hmm. kind of considerations, mm -hmm. and the high entropy part, which is based on keeping everything in solution. So how big of a, you know, if you want to use say something at say a thousand degrees C, how large of a heat of formation would you need, you know, say like a five component alloy in order to stabilize the inner metallic phase? Uh, uh, first, I want to clarify the one thing that is we, we don't use the high entropy alloy in our the many papers. Because we don't think that uh, this material is actually high entropy. It's not based on the high entropy, the, the material, especially the properties of the material. So we prefer to use the uh, name of the multi component alloys and also the complex, uh, complex, not the high entropy alloy. Okay, well, so what's whatever the terminology like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're still using the. So if I want to. Uh, 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 to improve the charge application at the high temperature, like the over 100 degrees C, the most important thing for me is that to uh, figure out the intermetallic phases or the intermetallic the materials can be stabilized at this uh, temperature region of higher uh, the 100 degrees C. So uh, now I mainly based on the thermodynamic calculation to predict the phase relationship and also the temperature of the phase stabilities. And we focus on the intermetallics that can be stabilized at the high, at high temperature. And uh, I don't think that entropy is a major, major, well, major part. But you, you, when you were in the beginning of the introduction, you mm -hmm. were telling me how many compositions come from the and you were suggesting, you know, 10 of the 7, 10 of the 8, 10 of the 9 different possibilities. Right? Now, if you, have, if, you, if you have that many, how do you search for intermetallic phases that you don't already know exist? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it, 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 it's also an issue. So, uh, our planet study is mainly based on the order of CC structure. Maybe we have some other different kind of phases that shows very good potentials, high melting point, and also the um, um, oxidation resistance. We need to discover it again and again. And the planet stage, I was mainly focused on RAN2 structure to select these phases based on the, uh, our current database and to, to, to select out this uh, L2 structure in this multi-element system. Right. So if you look at your, if you look at your uh, system, you have these uh, L1, 2 particles. Mm -hmm. And the, the main strengthening mechanism is sort of an R1 looping kind of mechanism, or is, do you really care about the actual plastic deformation of the L12 phase? Uh, I think it's a combined effect. 
So but if, I mean, even if, if that's true, I, I don't accept that, but if, if it's true, then what what do you look for in the L2 phase or to, you know, to make to make it so you combine these two effects? How do you how do you choose them? Is it all based on anti-phase boundary energies or super intrinsic stacking fault energies? Uh, what what's the controlling thing for the dissipation of that? Uh, yeah, the starting point is actually based on the physical methodology of the nickel series development. It's a very typical L1-2 phase. Yes. So, uh, uh, yes. uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so actually, if I want to design the multi component L1-2 structure, yeah. I will mainly focus on the sub occupation behavior. Uh, especially different kind of the elements will, we, we put this, we, when we put these elements into this kind of the sub lattice structure and the atoms will go into different sites. And the, when they go into different sites will cause the change of the properties in different aspects. Especially for the anti-phase boundary energy, if we put the titanium and also the tantalum and albium, they will be go to this that sub lattice and it will cause the uh, increase uh, of the anti fence energy. And also, if we put the, some other elements like the iron, the cobalt, and the chromium, it might be easily to go to this the first center site and it will be cause the uh, reduction of the like the VEC value will help to stabilize this structure. So, we want to. Uh, one, uh, one aspect is to stabilize it, I went to structure and also to make the structure stronger and stronger. So this uh, is my logic. So, so if, you're trying to, if you're trying to strengthen the L2, what do you want to do? You want to try to make the difference between the two sub lattices as large as possible? Like uh, nickel, nickel three aluminum, it's all nickel here and all aluminum here. You have multi component in each sub lattice. So what do you want in terms of uh, what, what's your ideal distribution between the two sub lattices? You want them as similar as possible or as different as possible to get higher strength? Uh, uh, it's hard to say, but I think it, it's, it will be good to make these two sub lattices much different. Much different. For, your, for higher strength? Uh, if we want high strength to make the difference. Yeah. But if we, because you have the a directional bonds between this the nickel aluminum and nickel and nickel, and if we want to have these materials to have uh, uh, relative high ductilities, we actually want to, uh, the sub lattice in the corner, to have some different kind of elements like the I and the cobalt and some other types of elements. So the partition. Okay, it's interesting, very interesting structure. So okay. well, maybe uh, it's my turn. So you mentioned some other potential applications, for example, using your material for hydrogen evolutions. Yeah. So I'm just very wondering because your sample morphology, what, what is the typical sample morphology of your structure? Can you fabricate into different morphology? Uh, it, it's a bad, for this material, like, uh -huh. like this SEM image, it's produced by the uh, melting spinning. Okay. So, and uh, we also produce this material in the, in the sheet and also uh, some other shapes. Uh, I think it's very easy to change the shape of the material. Okay. And uh, for this material, why we produce this material in the uh, spinning? to get the ribbons because we want to refine the dendrite structure. So, so we need a very rapid uh, cooling rate to refine this dendrite structure, and then we can refine the porous structure, the size of the, the, of the porous, so to increase the re reaction activities. Mm -hmm. So basically, you are more like a solid structure with a lot of porosity. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. And do you know what is the typical active site for your material? Because you know, for electrocatalytic applications, the electrocatalytic site is very important. So I assume you have 
a lot of different multi-component in your system. So there is kind of very issue or important yes, yes. in order to first understand what is a category site in order to really enhance the performance. Do you have any idea about that? Uh, for the future design, you mean that? Yeah. Uh, the first thing that uh, at the present stage, I was mainly also based on the L1 two structure, mm -hmm. and the two cause the uh, to cause to change the sub lattice occupation, and the change of the sub lattice occupation actually will cause the change of the chemical bonding and also the uh, the chemical uh, synergistic effect. It will change the uh, the chemical reaction properties. So if uh, based on the I want to structure, we can change the atoms into different sub lattice and to change the properties, the, especially the chemical reactivity. And the first thing that uh, uh, now we try to use the vanillium and also the niobium and also the molium to introduce the, this site to cause the lattice distortion. And also we second way is to in, uh, insert the interstitial atoms like the carbon and the boron into the lattice and cause the to increase the uh, lattice distortion and uh, to explore whether the change of the lattice structure will uh, increase the reaction activities. Can you control the string as well? When you, uh, uh, yeah, we can control it. Because actually there's a lot of reports saying how string, different string of the material uh, yes, change yes. the catalytic activities. Yeah, now we can control it uh, very well. And to follow up question is, what is kind of the electrical conductivity of your materials? Because even though this is a kind of a metal, different metal component combined together, but what are the typical electrical conductivities? Uh, is a very good conductor compared to other pure metals? Or... Because uh, you go for uh, electrical catalyst, I assume you are using it for electrical catalyst. That actually, just in addition to the electrochemical uh, properties, actually the electrical conductivity is also very important. Because you need to carry yes, yes. your carry yourself. Uh, I haven't measured the electrical conductivity of this material, but if I just based on the properties of the electrical uh, reaction, I think it uh, mm -hmm. might, might be have a good connect, uh, electrical conductivity. Compared so if we, it has a bad conductivity, I think it might not produce such a good performance. But I will to go to try to measure it in the future. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Okay. Um, any question from? Uh, okay. So, uh, okay. Um, uh, I have a lot of technical questions. I'm pretty. Uh, I'm pretty interested in the structure you create for your course. But uh, what kind of the image, GM image, which have nano size particle well distributed in the matrix? Right? Uh, let's just read my minute, minute, because uh, when we fabricate, okay. yeah, uh, that's cool. That's if you really components. Yeah, yeah. computers. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that's cool. Okay, yeah, um, uh, when we yeah. fabricate components, if the so would you tell me in all terms of this house how you create this manual cycle part? Right? How you you miss the uniform in the matrix? Uh, yeah. uh, Actually, from this figure, uh, the, this is the basic uh, ideas about the combination of these two kind of the nanostructure. So, if we just put this uh, in the way about the nanoparticles and also the nanometrics to put together by uh, such as the, the, the boy meeting and also some other technique, I, I think it's very difficult to make them to um, uniform distributed. So, actually, for this. Microstructure is the, the alloy is uh, fabricated by the arc melting and also 
is a solid solution treated at the high temperatures. It means that uh, uh, it means that we can get a super uh, saturated solid solution, a single phase uh, alloy in the high temperatures, and also when we get the high highly saturated uh, super saturated uh, solid solution alloy, we put these materials uh, down to the low temperature. Um, about 700 degrees C, mm -hmm. and then the particles will be in situ from from this uh, 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 sort of solution elements. So it ju it's just the process like the, the salt that we produced from the water, the sea water. It's a very similar process, I think. Is it like a kind of normal uh, fish separation? Can we call it fish separation? Uh, fish, fish separation because, for example, with, with synthesized, uh, so, with synthesized pigments, for example, semiconductor, for example, uh, gallium arsenide phosphide, gallium arsenide phosphide, we, we probably will have the separated phase gallium arsenide plus gallium phosphide, something like this. Is this a kind of fish separation? You have two phase, they will also. But, but automatically separated into yeah it's a uh, process of first separation this actually is a, a precipitation reaction so biotechnically it's not possible to produce like um oscillating nano size particle it's not possible right? you have to use another phase in the matrix right um we actually produce the single phase. If we want to produce isolated nanoparticles, especially the intermittent nanoparticles, we can produce this pure intermittent and then use the like the the high pressure, the the gas to put this material into the smaller size. So the first one is to have to produce the pure single phase the intermittent material. If we pass on the dual phase, actually we can now to uh, to to produce the isolated the nanoparticles from the dual phase system. Usually ATP. So according to my understanding, ATP is used to produce very high resolution. Yes, but it seems that like your resolution here is not that high. It's pretty large, right? Right? While twenty-five nanometer, not specimen. Uh, I mean this one. Yeah. I mean, this, this is the uh, uh, shows the morphology of the teeth. I I understand, but I mean you the image uh, resolution here is not not that typically high, as I'm right? but because. Uh, how to say? But usually, I, I, I consider ATP is, is used to produce very high resolution, even atomic resolution. Mm -hmm. No, it, yeah. it's not always in the resolution. Uh, 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 you can see the, uh, the, the crystal periodic structure. Yes. But yes. here you don't see uh, it. it atomic probe, but does not reach to atomic resolution. It's near atomic scale. Near. Near. Yeah. near. <laughs> Close near, to. But not. Otherwise, you see periodic structure. Yes. Especially in the Z direction, resolution is very poor. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, yeah. if we want to get a very high resolution, we have to uh, the chip into the specific yeah. orientation and get this uh, periodic arrangement of the, the atoms. It's actually, not the, the, the real atoms, it's just the shoes reconstructed from the yeah. Uh, combination analysis. What about fatigue behaving on your situation? Uh, I'm wondering if mega size particle, if you if you cycling repeat the loads, then what's what's going to happen? Uh, at the present time we haven't conducted the fatigue test. Yeah, can you just like, predict that like, you have this location? Like, yeah. What's the mega size particle will intact with this location? Um, we, we now mainly focus on 
uh, the tensor test and uh, the fatigue and also the like the fatigue is our the studies at the next stage. So uh, our logic is to select the most uh, you know high performance materials with uh, high tensile ductility is the first step. And if we selected uh, out these very high performance materials, then we put in the material into the fatigue test. Uh, it's not conducted by our group. It's mainly collaborated by some other uh, researchers like the Professor P uh, P Peter Liao in the Operage Laboratory. So he's an expert in the uh, fatigue test. Okay. Uh, then uh, you mentioned you will probably uh, use your materials for functional applications, mm -hmm. the palaces. And, and you know, in recent years, we've been trying to produce single item catalysis for, for, for high performance. And I, I, I don't know about structural materials, I see you just mix nanoscience particles in the matrix. I'm wondering if it's possible in the future that you can design some materials at atomic level, like electric catalysis. I to control it's not cross, not nanoscience, it's very very small. If you can you can do so, that's uh, yeah. I mean you, you can expect any any even better performance or it's, yeah. it's not useful. Yeah. I, I, I will go have a try this part. I will go to have a try. Because uh, limited by the current equipment. Mm. At the plant stage, if, if you can make it, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can expect a good performance. Or it's not not useful. Like, you, can you follow? I think we can further improve the properties of the material. You mean Especially, you actually, from this figure, the the porous the surface structure produces a very pronounced effect on the uh, electron re reactions. So at least uh, we can refine the, this uh, surface, the power parts of the surface, and the, to uh, further gradually increase the, the specific area of the material. And so I, I think uh, along this direction, at least we can further in, increase the reaction activities. But whether it's better or not for the sustainability, I, I'm not sure. So maybe we can get a very um, systematic studies. So what is the specimen size for your them, test or, or TM characterization? You see the particle well distributed in this small area. See, then, then what about the other areas? How, how large? So uh, it, 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 it's a bulk material just like the size of this. So you check different places. This is all uniform. Uh, yeah. We, we can check this. Uh, uh, sorry. Just from here, we can see yeah. a lot of grains, and we can, if we zoom in this um, uh, the, the, the region, we can see different kind of the, uh, orientation. To zoom in this orientation, to see the nanoparticles, it's almost the same, you know. But it will have some different thing at the grain boundary region. So if we, we just focus on the grain material, the market structure is almost uh, similar. With different orientation. Yeah, first of all, the general size distribution is within a grain mass. Uh, within grain So, how will this particle affect the mass? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not sure here. Uh, actually, I put this material into my supplementary of the material of the manuscript. But if we look at the grain boundaries, So, ne ne next one, next one. Uh, also next one. So, would you, would you click here? No, 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 it's
And next. I just show this one. Okay. Uh, if we look at the grand boundary, uh, it's not the same condition, the last uh, same, same I like, just uh, for example, if I look at the grand boundary, the grand area is a very uniform distribution of the nanoparticles. But we look at the grand boundary. Sometimes we are from this uh, cellular shape of uh, precipitation. And also, some either like the critical phases, uh, small blocky phases. So it is also a critical issue to control the grand boundary, to avoid the formation of this undesigned phases. Okay, last one. But let, let me confirm your progress. You are trying to, I, I'm, I'm not trouble, I'm not right. You're, you're trying to balance the yield, ductility. Yeah. Then, then, have you had a test, for example, uh, trade companies? It's all related. Okay. Three companies. Uh, now we haven't tested them. Just the best. Only, only tens of tests. Oh, only tens of tests. Okay. 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 I'm, I'm done. Okay, thanks. Um, any question from ODN in the internet? No, uh, so yeah, so if not, please join me to thanks Professor Young House for the whole uh, presentation. Thank you.